This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Arabato. This is One on One. We've had her here before. We have her back. But for the first time, listen to this introduction. Dr. Nancy Blattner, the president of Caldwell University. Yes, we're still getting used to that transition. Thank you so much. Tell folks the difference between going from a college to a university. That's a big deal. It's a big deal, and it was a long process, two years in the making. And, you know, I would say that Caldwell had actually already become a university. It just not, had not achieved the status or taken the title. But the process um, forces us to look at our faculty credentials. It forces us to look at our budget, our library holdings, and to really do an introspective study of who we are, the students we serve, and the number of master's degree and doctoral students particularly that we have. And so while we continue to be an institution that, that is focused on our students and on our excellence in teaching and in the classroom, we felt that we really wanted to become a university because to many of our students it signifies something a little bit different. And I had the experience, Steve, when I was with a group of students uh, over spring break in Spain. And um, we were at the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona and mm -hmm. the tour guide said, are you um, high school? Our, our college, you know, the students, because they look young, okay. And we said, yes, we're a college. And so she began to give us a presentation. And suddenly I said, we're actually a university, because it was very clear that in that setting, college and university mean two completely different things. Do they? Yes. And she said, oh, then this is a different presentation. And so it really drove the point home that I'd been making back here in New Jersey. We have a fairly substantial international student population, and for them, to come to a university, I think, is much more prestigious. It has a very different connotation. And for them to return to their countries to be marketable when they go to work. For our own students who are graduating who might want to go on and do a professional degree or do a master's or a doctoral program in higher ed, to come from a university, I think, is going to help them as they go forward to apply to different educational institutions mm -hmm. if they want to pursue another degree. You know, the other part of this, Nancy, is that you and I have had lots of conversations with other college presidents, and you are out nationally talking to colleagues. And one of the things you told our producers that you wanted to talk about, which I found fascinating, which I want to talk about, is this whole question of a federal, new federal, <clears throat> excuse me, rating system. Mm -hmm. 7,000 colleges and universities are being evaluated, rated, if you will. And it sounds pretty innocuous to me, but you say it's not. Mm -hmm. And you say there are concerns that we need to understand before we just say, hey, sure, why not? Go ahead. I do. You know, this is President Obama's initiative. And I think that all of us in higher education can agree with the goals that he's trying to accomplish. And those are accessibility for students, affordability, and also completion of the college degree. So there's no argument with that at all. But let me tell you where a few of our concerns as college presidents come in. First of all, it's very difficult when you have 7,000 institutions that have diverse missions, diverse student bodies, diverse populations, to reduce everything that they do to a number or to a ranking or to a rating. So that's the first thing. It's pretty reductionistic. The second is that these ratings or rankings only take into account first-time, full-time, college students that stay at your institution and graduate. The number from the American Council on Education suggests that that's only 27 percent of the students that we serve. President Obama himself transferred, so he would not be in this system. As did I. Yes, as do many students, many. and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's sort of um, the trend today. That's very common. So that's one of the concerns. Another concern would be the metrics that are going to be used that are somewhat ill-defined. So when we talk about tuition, for example, are we talking about net tuition? Or are we mm -hmm. talking about sticker price? Are we talking about a four-year graduation rate or a six-year graduation rate? When we ask graduates to pay back based on their salaries, are we looking at program graduates or aggregate? Because if an institution, for example, has a medical school, a legal school, any professional school, those students, by virtue of the degrees they obtain, you would assume are going to be making a higher salary than someone who might be graduating from a liberal arts, faith-based institution. Like yours. Yes. So and they'll rate higher. We would rate lower. Right. They yes. would rate higher, but that's, yes. that's apples and oranges. And the problem is one that, I, for us, I haven't even gotten to, and this is, for me, the heart of the matter. Um, students that come to Caldwell are often um, 
what I would say, being given a real opportunity or a chance to succeed. We have small class sizes, very caring faculty. I know many institutions do, but we hire to that mission. That's part of our mission. So we take a chance on students who come to us, and as a result of that, we may have more academically underprepared students than other institutions. We have certainly a large number of first generation going to college students, a very diverse student population, and students who come from a very so low socioeconomic bracket in many cases. These are students that are at risk for a That's variety right. of reasons. And so if President Obama's ranking goes into place, that's one thing. But in 2018, we're, we've been told that Congress will vote to tie Pell funding to the ranking system. Federal funding to? Yes. So and what are you going to do, like not accept those kids in so that your ranking will be higher? You've made my case exactly. So when we make a mission-based decision, all right, and so I take that student that I understand is living in his car and I move him into my residence hall. Or Which I you've done. I have on more than one occasion. And that's part of our mission as a Catholic Dominican institution. And we're proud of that. But would I at that point or would someone who would succeed me in this role years from now, would that person then be forced to say, can I make that decision? Can I do what I believe is the right thing that's really in line with our mission? Or am I going to be hurting other students who come here because their federal Pell mm. dollars are going to be tied to a decision I make from the heart instead of the head, perhaps? <sighs> it's a tough wow. one. Wow, a lot to think about there. It is a lot to is think about. Is this in about. place? No, but it is scheduled to go into place for fall of 2015. And so right now there's a lot of uh, churning at the Department of Education as they're trying very quickly to pull these ranking systems in place and to get the data from a reliable source. And that's another part of the issue because, as you've said, apples are not always compared to apples. Sometimes apples are compared to non-fruit items. Wow. Um, on Capital Report, on our sister program, New Jersey Capital Report, we're going to have Nancy in to talk more about the public policy implications of this because it will be an ongoing discussion. Give me one minute on the 75th anniversary of Caldwell University. Well, we're so excited. It's September 19th this fall. And we are celebrating the perseverance of Mother Joseph Dunn, who founded the institution as a Catholic college for women. Of course, we, we are no longer single gender, and certainly we have many faiths and many people on the campus that are very diverse. But it is a testimony to her perseverance that we're still uh, alive and vibrant today because she never gave up the dream to have Caldwell College. It's powerful stuff. Nancy Blotner is the president. Dr. Nancy Blotner is the president of Caldwell University. And the university status got kicked in when? December 9th of 2013, officially rolled out July 1st of 2014, Steve. It's a very big deal. Thank and you. And we're glad to have you as a higher education uh, colleague and partner. And we wish you nothing but the best. My pleasure we'll to be here. We'll keep talking about this other issue uh, on the federal level as well. Thanks, Nancy. Stay right there. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll be right back in one-on-one -on -one right after this. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Kessler Foundation, psc and Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey's Credit Unions, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, United Water, and by Qualcare, Inc. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.